So, um, if Iris were to ever get superpowers for an episode, what abilities would you want to have? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. Maybe the power to heal. I think she's just such a kind, loving, good hearted person. And we see that in her working at Future News. Like she just wants to find out what's going on in such a city. She wants to do her part to help the city. And so I think something about her is very nurturing and healing. And so I think maybe that's like, it's like almost every character at this point is keeping a pretty big secret from Iris. Um, is Iris going to get some knowledge in the episodes ahead, and, and, and how, how is that going to affect her going forward? Uh, everyone's lying to her. Everyone. Seems like everyone knows who Flash is. Um, I think you know she she will find out sooner than later. That can only be her soon. And I think when she finds out, she's going to be really angry. Um, the most important people in her life have been keeping a secret from her. It's not just any secret, it's a huge, huge, life-changing secret. And so I think she will be extremely devastated, um, more so angry, which we haven't really seen that in her. You know, she's, she's never been really angry with any uh, in her life. And so it'll be a nice and chaotic moment for her to finally say to him, like, it's not okay for people to lie to me, and I'm not okay with it. It's coming. It's coming. Eventually it's coming. <laughs> so we kind of saw like the positive side to that though in the episode, in the brief moment that she did get to find out that Barry was the Flash and she seemed really excited and then that kind of came, that reared its ugly head in, cool, yeah. in so the following. Happened. Yeah. I don't know what she was excited. I think she was excited because she finally told Barry how she felt, and so she's almost about to die, and then Barry is the Flash, and so there's so much going on in her mind, and I think it was a cool moment. It was very um, satisfying for me as I used to play that moment. I think people have been waiting for so long. It was right? really satisfying to watch, too. Yeah, I think fans were so satisfied to finally have that moment because she hadn't really answered Barry since episode nine. He kind of told her how she how it felt and she just kind of left it in the air. And so to have her finally say to Barry, I, I love you too, um, to a certain degree, um, was really, really, it's a, it's a great payoff. And then to have it reversed, it was like, oh. So does that mean any more West Allen in the future or is this, was that punch in the whole debacle kind of? It will never be the end. It will never be the end. I, I don't know. They're so iconic. Um, there will always be some sort of relationship between them. Um, I don't know. I think. I think it's just the love of a lifetime, and you can't. You can't really. What can you say? What can you say? <laughs> Now that Eddie is reluctantly in on the secret, very secret, how does their dynamic, Iris and Eddie's dynamic, change, change over the next few episodes? She's starting to notice that Eddie is acting strange. Um, I think in episode 18, which is Eddie, today, not this Tuesday, the next one, she, you know, is. She knows that Eddie is being strange, and she even says to him, "Like you've solved." Too many cases. You're doing better than you usually do. Are you working with Flash? So she's starting to figure out that maybe there's more than meets the eye with Eddie as well. So yeah, she she will deal with Eddie. <laughs> so who would you choose in real life, Eddie or Barry? The actors or the characters? Characters. Okay, it's like uh, <laughs> that's a tough question, and I think that's why it's so fun to play because I know every. With Barry Allen, the hero of the show, right? So we all root for Barry Allen. Yeah. But if you think about Eddie as a character, he's a great man. He loves Iris. He's moved her into his apartment. He's been nothing but kind and gentle to her, you know, since the day that we met Eddie. So it's it's not like he's a bad guy. So it's hard to choose. It's hard to choose. And they're both good looking. <laughs> Any, is there any other character on the show that that you haven't interacted with a lot that you get to spend some time with uh, toward the end of the season? Yeah, Wells, Barry. I mean, not Barry. Uh, Caitlin and Cisco. You'll see Iris kind of just in general move towards that Star Labs um, family. Can you characterize sort of her relationship with each of, of that three core star team? Um, can I? I can. <laughs> Should I? <laughs> Um, it's, it's very inquisitive, um, 
as you can probably imagine. Um, I won't give too much away about that. I think it's it's better left inside. Now, will will Iris continue digging into the disappearance of her partner, or do you think that she's kind of believed what she's been through? I don't think she. I think she believes it to a degree because Eddie is telling her this. And again, she believes the men in her life foolishly. She believes them. Um, but how could she not? She's not the only other told her the truth and the only ever been honest with her. So she believes them at their word. But I think, you know, Iris is smart enough to know that not every that, that's not fitting together quite right. So I think in the back of her mind she's gonna continue to mull over the fact that something is weird with Mason and he didn't just go to Brazil. Um, so yeah. You guys have had some great guests on the yeah. Do you have any uh, favorite interactions in the past couple of episodes? I mean, Mark Hamill. <laughs> it's Mark Hamill. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to every other guest star, but Mark Hamill. <laughs> it's Mark Hamill. <laughs> um, he's amazing. He has energy for days. Um, we were shooting kind of late into the night, and he could out energize me. Man, I don't know how he does it. And it's just a uh, Consummate professional, and he's so entertaining, and he's so kind with people and fans. It just kind of reminds me that you know, no matter how big you get, so there's no reason not to be cool. There's no re if Mark Hamill is cool, you should be cool. You know. So you'd love to see him back in a few days. Absolutely. He's not dead. With the crossover episodes happening, um, do you? See, you know, it seems like there's a lot of opportunities for storytelling there, you know, characterization. Can you, you know, hint at what uh, Iris's, you know, perception is of this expanding universe with so many new heroes? On the scene? Yeah, I mean, I think we haven't seen too much of her kind of going into other universes. Um, but, you know, episode 18, there's a double date with Ray and Felicity and like, uh, Iris and Eddie, and then there's Barry as the awkward wheel, as usual, um, which is fun. It's always fun to have um, the actors from Arrow on our show. Um, it just adds a different dynamic. You know, it, brings, it seems like they bring something out of each other. Well, I think they bring a sense of seriousness and darkness to our show, to some degree, and a little lightness to their show. It's just fun to have that. Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah, you complement each other well. Yeah, and personally, I would love to be there. You know, if that would happen, but does Iris, Iris need some female friends? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what's, it, what's it been like for you to kind of work mostly with with male actors and, and kind of be the, the lone female force in a lot of the scenes that you're in? Um, that's a good, interesting question. It hasn't really dawned on me that it's it's unusual. Um, but I think it's important that Iris has a female friend. But I think it's also very indicative to the fact that she never really had a mother. Um, so I think she naturally gravitates towards being around men and she feels comfortable with Joe and with Eddie and with Barry. That's who she's naturally comfortable with. I don't know that she's had a lot of female relationships. So it would be interesting to see her kind of finally have a girlfriend. Um, and someone to kind of vent to about all these lion men in her life. <laughs> As she becomes increasingly a part of Star and what's going on with them, does, does she start to develop a relationship with Caitlin? Do they connect, do you think, on a certain level? Yeah, I mean, it's not a deep relationship, but I, I think they definitely have a mutual respect and kind of softness and kindness to each other, which I think is really great to see. So. What about Linda then? Because they work together at the newspaper and they're both journalists. Yeah. I guess they both have an interest in Barry, but we can sidestep that a little bit. <laughs> Are we going to see them interact anymore? Um, Linda? Mm -hmm. Or Linda? Linda, Linda oh, Linda Park. Yeah. Linda just Barry, with her. Just Linda and me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I liked having Linda. I think she was, I think ideally in the beginning it, she was supposed to be more of a friend for Iris and that didn't really pan out that way. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if she'll be back or not. But I loved having her. Have you started getting letters from kids yet about, you know, you making them want to be a reporter or anything like that? I mean, I get a lot of fans. Yeah. And again, the same earlier, if I can ever do an autograph signing this year, when I get fan, I try and answer everything that comes to my trailer. Because for someone to take the time to write a letter and submit means that they actually watch the show and they care about the show. And at least I can do is sign something and send it back. So it's really great to see people from Germany, Belgium, and Turkey, and Japan. It's amazing how international our show is. Um, it never ceases to humble me. So, yeah, it's, it's great. 
<laughs> what was the research like uh, going into the show and like developing the character, your own take on Iris? Like, did DC supply you with like nothing but great slash for They weren't adamant that we kind of became comic book nerds at all. And Jeff Johns was like, listen, you don't need to read the comics to, to play this part. He was like, you know, we, we hired you because you essentially brought something to Iris West that we naturally thought of it. Um, so just in that, I felt confident in being Iris. Um, for me personally, I did decide to go ahead and read some of the comic books. I still read them to this day. I'm not a comic book nerd. You have to ask me deep questions. <laughs> but, you know, I have my omnibuses, and I, I like to read them in, in between takes on set. Um, I'm reading Preacher to the other comic book. Um, I'm just kind of slowly delving into that, like, comic book world. And I didn't naturally mean to do that. It's just... The more you read them, the more you realize how brilliant they really are. Did Jeff Johns have any words when you you know you started to you know any insight into Iris that was particularly helpful? No. no. Okay. <laughs> but not in a bad way. I think he was just so excited. I remember after I first the show, I got a text message from him. And he was just like, I'm so glad we got you as Iris. And I'm like, this is Jeff Johns telling me that and he was excited that I was playing Iris West. I mean, he knows Iris West. If anyone knows Iris West, he knows Iris West. So for him to be excited that I was playing Iris West. Can you just like keep doing what you're doing? You just do <laughs> Can you say, does Iris get to share some scenes with some of the upcoming villains? Um, I'm sorry um, to ask these tough questions. Yeah, um, yes, yes. <laughs> if you had your choice in what Iris got up to in season two, you know, do you have any kind of you know, wish for her fantasy. Um, a direction you'd like to see her take. Or I want her to find out about her mother. Yeah. Okay. Family storylines kind of be flushed out. I think it would be interesting to see what happened to her mother. Where did she go? Why is she just been living with Joe for so long? Um, did Joe tell her the truth about what happened to her mother? And also the question of all this stuff. I think it would be very interesting. Um, other than that, I think professionally, I just I want her to continue to be a strong leader and to work alongside Star Labs and that team and go with the um, team of bad guys. I want her to be not so isolated from the rest of the team. So of the comics that you are reading, uh, have you come across any characters that you'd love to see debut in the show or interact with? Oh, that's a good question. Um, no, not that, no. Like I said, don't question me too deeply. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's great ones. Heatway was one of the ones in the beginning that I was like, I love Heatway. He's one of my favorite villains. So for Dominic Purcell to come in, that was pretty amazing. What? And Gr Grod. I want some of Grod. <laughs> what brings out your inner fan? What do you geek out over? My inner fan? Yeah. Like about the show? No, about in life in general. Art, I love you know, whatever. time travel. Um, so that's, I loved episode 15. Just the idea that we were opening the gates for time travel so soon in the show was really exciting to me. Um, stuff like Lost, getting into, you know, just weird, supernatural Surrealistic. stuff. Surrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, guys.